Hello and welcome to Charter Local Edition Northwest. I'm Dana Cowley and today we're in Grand Ronde, Oregon and we're talking to people at the Oregon Economic Summit. My guest today is Representative Lou Frederick. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for inviting me. I appreciate that. Tell us a little bit about your district. You mentioned that it is small and condensed. Well, I have the smallest district in the state because oh. it's a uh, we have uh, the most concentrated po population in the state. And so I can walk from my district, from, from the north to the south of my district, in about 45 minutes to an hour if I'm not stopped by somebody, and I'm usually stopped by somebody when I try to do that. <laughs> uh, but it's a small district, whereas, you know, a friend of mine, uh, Cliff Bentz from Eastern Oregon, I think it takes him about an hour to fly across his district on, in the plane because it's so large. Uh, mine is the smallest district. It is. Um, it is urban. It has lots of. Uh, it has a Lloyd Center area, so people will know that the Rose Quarter. Uh, it has Emmanuel Hospital, Concordia University, Portland Community College, Cascade Campus, um, and so it's a. It has a lot of different folks there. It's changing, uh, very much involved in gentrification, mm -hmm. uh, which is a struggle because there are people who have lived there for decades who are now being moved out. So that's one of the issues that we struggle with there. Well, you have such diversity in what you have to offer business-wise and population-wise. How do you best serve that when you have so many different kinds of needs? That's well, tough for one lawmaker. Well, part of it is just getting out and talking with folks about what those needs are. Uh, and I spend a lot of time uh, in the community talking with folks, going to different groups. Uh, my, my wife doesn't go grocery shopping with me anymore because <laughs> Fred Meyer and Safeway seem to be, yeah, they, they seem to be the, the other office for me. Um, but I, I'm, I have a, you know, a monthly town hall um, chat in a restaurant, uh, but I'm always out talking with folks. That helps a lot. I need to do more of that. I, I think I need to do more of that. So I'll probably spend a lot more time talking with other people as well. But it is a uh, the good news is I've lived in the district since 1977. Oh, so you so know I have, that district. I have the, the, an idea of what, what some of the issues are. I've seen the changes. I've seen the concerns. And people are not afraid to come up and tell me about them. Tell you that, so. <laughs> and so your wife will say. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> so from all of your decades of experience there, yeah. combined with what people are telling you, what are the top couple of priorities right now for you and your district? Well, we have quite a few. Well, housing is one of the major ones. Mm. Um, we have the, the price of housing, uh, the rentals, the, the cost of, of homes is really quite something. Uh, that's a struggle. We have health care issues, mental health care issues. Um, uh, police and uh, law enforcement concerns. Uh, education is one of the top issues in my district. So, and, and then I, the economic security of some form. It's not just economic development, but how do we get um, small manufacturing plants? How do we get people working and nearby their homes? Uh, because that's one of the key elements there too. Well, and just getting people around the bend from the economic collapse. Mm -hmm. I think people before that didn't worry too much about money. Ever since the economy went bad, a lot of people are worried about money, and it really impacts how you spend. Well, it does, but there's another aspect for me. My community has had, uh, we had at one time 37% African American in, in the community, and now it's about 17%. Hmm. But there's, a, there's a, a phrase that I've heard many, many times. Uh, when the black community, when the white community uh, gets a sneeze, the black community gets pneumonia. Hmm. So people were concerned about money and, and those kinds of issues for quite some time for and, and and that's that because the uncertainty was always there uh, and so now we're trying to figure out how we bring back bring some kind of certainty and not a, not a regular crisis uh, that's the difficulty right now that's the economic security that I'm talking about well I just have time for one more question oh, sure within the next year right. with all of those concerns and priorities what do you hope to accomplish well one of the things and one of the reasons I'm here is that I wanted to make it clear that uh, I want to reconnect the rest of the state. Um, with, I, we've, we've seen the metro area disconnected from the rest of the state. That is not good for the state of Oregon. And one of the reasons I'm here is to talk and listen to people in the Coastal Caucus, because I know those folks come with some of those coastal issues. I've been also going out to logging communities. I've been out to the ranches in eastern Oregon as well, and the, and the, and the, the farms and the wheat fields and other places, just to see what the issues are, because I want to reconnect. When I was a rep reporter, I got a chance to go to all 36 counties, so I don't yeah. feel are particularly uh, unusual in those in those places, so I. Hey, you don't feel like it's us against no, them. No, not at all, and I feel very very comfortable there. 
this, uh, this reaffirms that need. Um, the issues that we're talking about here with forests, with economic development, with education, with the tribes and some of the other issues, some of the folks that have been marginalized over the years, I certainly can relate to that. But for me, it's also a matter of just saying, okay, Oregon needs to become Oregon as a, as a state again. We're going to always unite. have, we're going to unite, always unite. have fights. So that's always the case. I mean, that you, you have that in your own family, but mm -hmm. one of the things that we have we've seen is we no longer have as many people who are family members who live outside of this, this, the, the area, the metro area. So mm -hmm. when you had Thanksgiving, Uncle Joe, who was a logger, you might disagree with him on vigorously on things, but he was family. Still at the and you table. Had, and you, and at, <laughs> at the table, and you had respect for what they did. I think we need to try to reestablish that, and that's part of the reason I'm here. It's great psychology. Huh. Well, thank you for joining us. We certainly thank appreciate it. Thank you for the invite. It. I really appreciate that, too. And, and the best of luck to you with all you are working thank you. on. Thank you very much, very much indeed. And thank you for watching. I'm Dana Cowley, and this is Charter at Local Edition Northwest.